Welcome back to Seriously Funny. I'm your host, Mashnor Kabir, and I created Lemonade. Today, we're going to talk about some random, completely unrelated things. I'm waiting a bit for school to calm down so I can do the research and write notes for an episode on grief, on sleep, other topics that are more uh, long form, similar to the COVID episode. Today it's snowing and I'm wrapped up in a blanket. I usually don't do this, but if you hear rustling of a blanket, that is because I am con- I am currently in a cocoon. I am a caterpillar going into metamorphosis, and once the snow stops or once this podcast episode is over, I will be emerging into a full butterfly. It's going to be incredible. Anyways, for today, we're going to talk about, again, a bunch of dumb stuff. So first of all, complaining. That's what we got on the list here. So we've all probably complained before. I've complained before. I know it's crazy because I'm, you know, the host of this podcast, Seriously Funny here. I'm, I'm so close to being enlightened. I may be, you know, I stand, I rival the Buddha in, in his enlightenment. I, uh, I might be more enlightened than the Buddha. I know it might seem like that, but sometimes, uh, well, not as much anymore, except for humor's sake. Before in my life, I used to complain. I was also human once. That's a joke. I sound so pretentious. I had a conversation about that with a with a buddy of mine recently. It was a great, good conversation. Anyways, yeah, we've all complained before. Uh, but a few years ago, uh, I thought about it. I really thought like, all right, I'm complaining about these things. Really, it was a video game. I was playing Titanfall 2, and I was complaining about all these really stupid things. And I, I really just thought about complaining. Just the idea of complaining about things. Uh, complaining about food, complaining about this, complaining about that. And I realized it made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Like, for example, the, the, the video game. I, at one point, I was complaining about me winning in the game. I was actually complaining that the person that I was going up against didn't try hard enough, and they died to me when I wasn't in my best state of playing. Like, I made 10 mistakes, and I still won, and I would actually complain about winning. Um it was it was quite the time. And then there's also complaining about food, like, oh, this food tastes disgusting. Complain, complain, complain. So I live with my parents. Um, if I have food that doesn't taste good, complaining is not going to change the taste. And it's not going to change the fact that, like, it has to be eaten. Like, it's on the plate now. I can't just throw it away. That's just not nice. You can't just waste the food like that. I can't, don't want to do that. So, you know, usually, I usually eat all of my food, and for some reason, my parents, after I finish eating, will be like, how was it? And if I didn't like it, I'm, you know, I'm pretty honest, so I say, it sucked, but whatever. Uh, Or, you know, I I didn't, it wasn't the greatest of great, but it was food. And then they wonder, like, why didn't you say anything? It's like, what is saying anything going to do for me? I Like, it's food, it's sustenance, the taste doesn't matter, as long as I'm getting some sort of nutrition here. Um, you know, vegetables, for example, the way that, uh, my parents make vegetables aren't always the, the tastiest of the tastiest, but they're still vegetables. They're still nutrients, still need to eat them. They're still probably good for me in some way. So I'm not going to sit there and complain about how they suck. Uh, You know, you know, when you get older, uh, I sound like an old man, both in voice and in my words here. The vegetables will become less bad. Vegetables can actually be really good if they're made correctly, but doing that is really hard, and I don't know how to cook, so it's not like I'm going to do anything about it. See, if I was cooking in my household, then I could complain, and we'll get to that in a second here. So when you're complaining, like two th- two things, like there's two ways that it's usually going to go. Either you don't care enough about what you're complaining about to change it, so it doesn't matter. Like if I'm playing a game and there's a bug in the game and I'm complaining about that bug, like am I actually going to go learn how to code, go apply for a job at the company and fix the bug? No, I'm not going to do that. Why am I wasting my breath complaining? And then the second possibility is that you can't, like plausibly speaking, change it like you can't do anything so same with the bug in the game like for me to learn coding become a game developer and then go work for a company and then fix that one specific bug that's going that's a that's probably not going to happen that's just not realistic so why am i wasting my breath like i don't understand why would i do that and i realized how dumb it was to complain like i was literally wasting my breath and it got me nothing
Now, is it that I never complain now? Uh, not seriously. So I will make complaints, but like dumb, really funny, really sarcastic, really ironic complaints just to make people laugh. My, I don't, you know, legitimately complain about anything anymore because I, I just nothing matters enough for me to complain about. Uh, again, complaining is just a waste of your breath and it's really stupid and it's just it's not a good time. It's, you know, it's, it's not why are you wasting your time? Why are you getting angry for nothing? Like, you, it's just negative energy going nowhere. It's not fueling anything. Like, um, okay. And on that, you know, emotions are messengers. I don't think we've had an episode on emotions yet. One day, just like the personality disorders, one day. So if you're getting frustrated or you're getting annoyed, it's because your body, your mind is saying that something should be different. Um, you know, and, and that's what emotions are. They're just trying to tell you something. So your anger or, or your frustration or your annoyance, they're just trying to say like, hey, this isn't cool. And so, you know, this can be a really strong thing. You know, Martin Luther King Jr., he was frustrated, but he didn't just go home, sit on the couch and complain and say, ah, this sucks. F in America. What are you doing? No, he went out and he did something. And I always encourage people to do things for what they care about. That's important. But complaining especially when you're not going to do anything to change something is just I think I said, you know, like I said uh, earlier, it's just negative energy that isn't fueling anything. And that's not good. It's going to affect your health. Literally speaking is it's going, you know, that anger, that frustration, if it has no place to go, and if it's unwarranted, and, and that's usually why it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, it's going to harm your body and it's going to harm your mind. And there's a lot of evidence for that. I'm not just pulling that out of my balls. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's completely fine to be frustrated. Um, but sometimes you just need to notice that frustration. And before you say, oh, this is horribly disgusting. What a horrible game mechanic. What is? Why does this even exist? Why does Wraith just disappear in the game? If you play Apex Legends, you know that uh, that that reference there but like you know when you notice that frustration arise within you just simply ask yourself do i really care like do you really care if you're not a professional tier gamer in the game it probably doesn't affect you that much now look 9.9 .9 times out of 10 you're not going to care about whatever you're complaining about so you just laugh about it and move on life will continue you're going to be okay don't don't uh don't waste your time and your life and your energy complaining. There's better things you could do, like making jokes out of that complaining to make people laugh. But it's not, you know, only sometimes is it funny to watch someone get genuinely angry. Usually when you don't know them and usually when you're not next to them. So when you're watching a YouTube video, watching someone get angry, see, then it can be funny because then that anger is not actually, you know, going to be directed towards you somehow. Um, yeah. Usually when I saw people getting angry while I was playing games with them, I would just uh, I would just get that anger directed towards me and then I would make them feel really dumb for yelling at me about something that happened in a video game. It was good. Good time. Um, next topic we got here. Like I said, these three topics, these three points on the notes today, completely irrelated. Um, but this uh, this topic is about lying to yourself. I think I've talked about lying. Yeah, I think I've talked about lying before in an episode, probably in the three tips for successful relationships. I said lying is absolutely garbage and I've never seen it work. Uh, I, I don't think lying is going to work most of the time. Um, however, sometimes I do lie, but only to myself. The only person I will lie to is myself. And the reason I do this is usually to keep me going. So, you know, before I continue, I want to share a story of the Buddha and then continue. The link to the original video that I saw this uh, this story on is going to be linked uh, in the description. The channel was Dare to Do Motivation. And I think the video was called, um, uh, like it was like Buddha story, the time when Buddha was tired uh, or something. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to paraphrase that story here. Once Buddha was traveling with his disciple Ananda, they were traveling to a village, but they were both old and tired, because that's what happens when you're old, thinking they may not reach the town they thought they may have to stay in the forest. Uh, they came across an old man, and Ananda said, asked that man, hey, how far is the town? The old man says, only two more miles, two more miles. Uh, the old man smiles, the Buddha smiles, and they go, to t and they go two more miles. 
And then after going two more miles, they haven't reached the town yet, but they came across an old woman. And then, you know, Ananda asked her, you know, how far is the town? The old woman says only two more miles. You're there. You're basically there. You know, you're right there. The woman laughs, Buddha laughs, and Ananda wondered, you know, why were they laughing? And so after going two more miles and not finding the village, Ananda became quite frustrated and tired, plopping down. He says he's done. I guess this goes back to the complaining thing that we were just talking about. Um, uh, but he was curious. His curiosity was piqued. And so he asked the Buddha, Buddha, why did you laugh? Why did you smile at the first man? And why did you laugh with the second woman? And the Buddha said that himself and those two people were of the same profession, the same work. The profession of encouragement, of pushing them two more miles. Buddha said he's been to the town and he knew how far it was, but he understood their encouragement and then pushed them four more miles. You know, it got them to go just that much closer to their goal. And so even tomorrow, uh, they'd be closer and it'd, be, it'd take less time for them to get where they were going. But, you know, Buddha uh, allowed Ananda to, to stay down and said, you know, they can rest for now and, and get there tomorrow. And, and yeah, you know, this is the moral of the story. Encouragement and, and some, uh, some, some, you know, white, uh, some unharmful lies. Um, encouraging, encouraging words. I think lying for encouragement to other people is, is generally wrong. So in this situation, although I'm trying to prove a point, um, you know, I'm not going to say just two more miles. I'm going to say, oh, it's not that far. Uh, if I don't think it's that far, maybe it is that far. I don't know. That's subjective. So, you know, so lying is uh, lying can be subjective sometimes, which is a complicated topic. Sometimes you can say someone to something that you believe that you understand to be true. Someone else might think it was completely false, in which case you're in a, you're in a little bit of an impasse there. Um, but yeah, anyways. Similarly to this story, sometimes uh, more so before a microscopic non-living organism decided to invade the planet, I would go running. I went, I ran outside every now and then. Um, and when I ran, sometimes I would say to myself, you know, after I get to that mailbox, I'll stop running and you know start walking. After I get to that car, I'll stop running. I'll start walking. Uh, and you know, I didn't stop after I got to the mailbox. And although my lungs hated me for it, I ran more. I got some more, I got some more running in there. Uh, some more good old fashioned cardio back when uh, I would run every like seven months, once a month in the morning. But yeah, you know, uh, along with that, there, you know, when I was doing the dumb experiments, like the meditating for multiple hours, doing nothing for multiple hours, doing, uh, uh, taking cold showers or something like I'd promise myself a reward sometimes that I would never actually give myself. And it did, it pushed me forward. It kept me going. Um, and although I may not have gotten that piece of chocolate that I promised myself, I finished what I set out to do. And as cliche as it sounds like that was enough, like that was okay with me. That was, that was fine. And so, you know, sometimes maybe you can very carefully lie to yourself, but if you know not at the back of your mind, but like maybe at the middle of your mind that you're lying to yourself, then it might not work out too well because um, your brain will secretly just be like, whatever, it's not worth it. But, you know, if you can lie to yourself legitimately, which is really, really, really hard, go for it. If it's to motivate yourself, great. Now, if you're in denial about something, see, that's a little bit less great. But yeah, denial is a is a topic for another day. It's a topic I've never written down, but I probably should write down. Denial is the trump card of every therapist. You know, you go to the therapist and you, you say, no, that's not true. And a bad therapist is just going to be like, oh, my patient's in denial. I'm right, obviously, because I'm a fake scientist. Anyways, um, yeah, the last thing I want to talk about here today is, uh, is, this, uh, is an interesting topic. I think it's in the title, Solving World Hunger. On the z-axis um so what if we could solve world hunger by farming on the z-axis or a thing called vertical farming i don't think you need to uh, i don't think i need an explanation that much but you know farming upwards basically we usually farm on the xy plane like on the ground what if we took the ground and we made it go upwards and we started farming that way and so we do already have a lot of farmland like in america here we produce enough food i think agriculturally just in itself to solve world hunger um so you know it's a that's a little depressing but uh 
what if we could start farming upwards? Like, what if we, um, yeah, what if we farmed upwards? So, you know, farmland can take up a lot of space, like a ton of space, uh, especially uh, animal agriculture. So cows and cows take up a ton of space, dude. Um, and veganism is probably the right thing to do. I'm not a vegan. I'm a carnivore to the fullest extent. But, you know, hopefully as science continues, they can just recreate meat in a healthy green way. And then we won't need the cows. And then it'll be cool, Gucci and, uh, and dope. So, uh, you know, hopefully science gets to that point. Meat eating probably isn't a good idea. And veganism genuinely is just environmentally and economically probably better than animal agriculture. But, you know, until we get there in an affordable way, uh, I'm eating meat unless I'm banned from eating meat. So, yeah. Anyways, farmland can take up a lot of space. So what if we took the farming? Well, I, we can't raise animals vertically, but, but you know, raising plants and growing plants and, and growing the green stuff uh, vertically, that'd be pretty fire. And so, you know, if, if you did that, you just have so much more space and the amount of food you are creating per square acre would just rise extremely high like it might be an exponential rise in how much food we can produce now this can go negatively in which case we're not solving world hunger and we're just creating more waste but it could also work out that we could solve i mean again we can probably solve world hunger right now if we really wanted to but um yeah i don't know i think this z-axis farming is really an interesting concept we've conquered the body to such a high extent um you know we we have solutions to like so many illnesses in 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 the medicine field uh, for example we can take a vein from your leg and graft it onto your heart to save your life that's pretty groundbreaking technology that's kind of insane that's kind of cracked human beings are crazy um but yeah I think this the Z axis farming is an interesting concept, and it actually is happening. Like it's being worked on right now. Um, uh, it, it's a growing thing, if I'm not wrong. Like it's vertical farming. So they'll either, cra I don't remember how they do it. It was it's this. There's a weird word for it. It's like aqua, aqua something, and it does farm on upwards. And so soil, for example, like obviously you can't just defy gravity. So how do you keep the soil in there and like say root vegetables? How would you do that? How do you grow a carrot upwards? Like you need you need a lot of soil for the carrot to like go into. Um, so, you know, how would that work? I don't know. I'm not a farmer. I'm not an agriculture dude. I just think that this is a really interesting topic and a really interesting way to farm. And I think as it grows, and I think it should grow, we can produce a lot more food. And I think organic food or whatever that means, um, we can increase the amount that's being made. And as such, we can lower the price and decrease the barriers to entry for healthy eating and uh, you know more more green eating instead of the plant uh, plant based products and also with the food and the organic stuff sometimes the things that they put on the foods or GMOs for example they're not actually bad okay I know you hear these things and sometimes organic food companies will make them sound scary but GMOs for example they're perfectly fine Kurtz Gazat has a video on it and it's a really good video so you can go give that a watch sometimes we can make food legitimately healthier and tastier with, you know, genetically modified uh, uh, food. So uh, it, it works out a lot of the time. And, and we usually know what we're doing with, uh, with science. Yeah. While I got a few minutes left here, I, uh, college sucks. Uh, crap, I have 18 credit hours this semester. And I didn't know that it, uh, it would be so bad. There were all a bunch of easy classes, but there's still so much work in all of them. And for some reason, I had this I thought yesterday, like you can never get ahead. Like no matter how hard I, I try, like I'm never ahead of my work. Uh, I feel like even if you worked 24 seven, every day of the week, you still would never be ahead. There would never be a point where you can sit back and say, oh, I finished all my work for the week. It just doesn't seem like it's a, somewhere you can get in college. You literally do have to regulate yourself and say, I'm done now. And doing that is extremely challenging, especially for me, because I don't have this natural sense of, oh, I'm done, like I'm finished. There's always something else. Like for me, I'm done when it's done. But when I don't have something to say, like, 
when I don't have a checkbox to like mark off when I'm finished, like I don't have to know what to do. So I just keep going constantly. And then I don't stop. And then at one point, it's just like, what am I doing? Like supposedly I'm studying, but then I don't remember what I just like read. So what was the point? Figuring out how to do college is really tough. So a lot of freshmen, they like do a lot of stuff and they work really hard. But then, you know, I'll talk to people that have, you know, done master's programs and be like, yeah, by the end of college, I was probably just putting in like one to two hours of studying a day. And then I more or less lived my life. And I don't know if that's just because homework went down or what, because a lot of my work really is just homework. But yeah, I don't know, man. College is tough. Like that's the moral of the story. Um, should you go to college? Uh, that depends on what you want to do. I'm not going to sit here and say everyone should go to college. Another thing is a YouTube channel. So I started the YouTube channel. I need to actually record a video for the YouTube channel. So that'll be fun. I think it's going to be on my dopamine detox. That's going to be video number uno. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in following me in, in my other endeavors on the internet, then, you know, Mash Nord Kabir on YouTube. Uh, yeah, it'll be great. Uh, hopefully, uh, I have a video on sleep in like a few weeks whenever I do that. Yeah, it's a good time. Anyways, college is hard. That's some more of the story uh, to outro this episode here. That's all for this episode of Seriously Funny. It's another simple one like last week. Um, hopefully, I can make uh, make make the time to create a more uh, a more fleshed out episode. I'm not sure how funny this episode was. Um, but hopefully it was somewhat enjoyable or hopefully it filled up some space for you, some time, some some of the air maybe in your empty space here. Um, you know, the cadence and the vibration of my voice tends to be pleasurable for some people. So maybe you're listening but not actually listening. So if that's the case, hopefully I filled up your space here with a good time, with some good vibrations of the gravel here in my throat. I also just woke up a few minutes ago. Well, not woke up, but I just got out of bed a few minutes ago. Um, so... Yeah, not sure how funny this one was, probably not very, but you know, thank you regardless for listening to another episode of Seriously Funny. I will see you next week. Peace.